Hello everybody and welcome to Kerbal Space Center. I'm 4040 and this is my first proper Kerbal Space Center video. Now what I'm going to be doing in this video, um, well I think I'm going to be demonstrating to you guys and showing you a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes in my upcoming PvP uh, series, which this can be a nice little intro to. Uh, I'm going to show you how, a lot of the work and how I uh, work the weapons and stuff that I'm going to be home making in the Kerbal Space Center universe. So, if we go into the vehicle assembly building here, there we go. Now, how I do a lot of my craft building is by basically making a, uh, a test bed uh, and then building cool rockets and stuff around it. So, I think we need to make a nice test bed to start off with. So let's build a basic frame that we can test weapons around. And what I'm going to use as my command module is going to be this little thing here, uh, which is one of the mods that I have installed that I'm pretty sure I'm going to put in the description. Uh, there we go, there it is, it looks very pretty, very functional, uh, it's got a brilliant view on the inside, which is what we want. Now, just for absolute simplicity's sake, what we're going to do is we're just going to put some fuel tanks and random stuff behind it, just as a space filler, so we've got something to run the weaponry down, let's see. No, that's too small. There we go, look at that, Kerbal Space Program. Now. Let's make this a fairly... Oops, same again. There we go. Let's make this a fairly relatively decently sized... There we go. Test bed, just so we can. So if you imagine this is the central spine and core of the ship. And what we want to do is put some structural elements that we can then mount the weaponry on. So... Uh, maybe not that one. i put that... Aww. Come on, clip. There we go. And then we can fix these sideways. That's one. There's two. There we go. And uh, then let's just give ourselves a bit of extra clearance, shall we? One and two. Nice and easy. I'll probably reinforce these again in a second. Now, as well as the main bracing, we're going to need to put some kind of mounting points. Uh, there we go. Let's try that again. Boop a doop a doop, and there we go. Two mounting points. They're roughly kind of in similar places. And that's the very basis of a test bed. From here and in, we can make uh, any pretty much weapon and stick them on here, so if they work. So you can do some small ones, some big ones, uh, and we can watch from in here as they launch, and generally just make a fool of ourselves. So I think, let's bring this down to earth a little bit. Ooh, uh, not that far. <laughs> there we go. Right then. Uh, so, uh, the very first type of weapon that I, I'm going to be using in my series is going to be a rather small... Um, it's going to be a rather small type of weapon uh, which comprises of a few very simple elements so what I'm going to do is quickly build it for you so we're going to go into our utility and I'm going to find the, the junior docking port now I use this for my smaller weapons let's zoom in a bit, there we go now, are you going to use symmetry? Are you gonna go? Where's wherever is your one gone? No. Okay. So we've got two junior docking ports, one and one. Okay. Now these are basically the mounting points. So if, for example, my ship runs out of ammunition, out of the stack that they're gonna build, uh, that's hopefully what's going to be left, and then we can dock whatever else we want on top of that. So it's basically reusable. So, if we get that one, uh, clip it on, and do the same. 
Boop. Right. So that is the start. Zoom in. You see they're nose to nose with each other, so basically this stays behind. This, once it's all gone off, uh, we can eject and tell it to bugger off. So, uh, what we want to do next is go to our proportion and find... Where have you gone? We need this little fuel tank and we need one of the smallest engines available. Where's it gone? That little thing. So we can put this on top of the fuel tank. And we'll do it on the other side too. Now don't worry about the docking port getting in its way. It will, should still be able to thrust and kind of go. So if we put a fuel tank on top of that, bear in mind that in space that's that's pretty much the payload there. Just just that. So that's 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 our entire. That's pretty much a very very simple weapon. Now it doesn't move very fast in space. Uh, let's quickly just anchor this so we can demonstrate it. Let's put that on. There we go. Boop. There we go. That should be good enough. Uh, we'll put. There we are. Boop. There you are. That should hold it up. Right, so these things uh, will be firing and will go off. Now, I'm going to basically copy it so we get two shots. Though, straight back in again, we're just going to grab ourselves a utility, I think. Yep. So, straight on top. Couldn't be simpler. There we go, and just spin it around. Oh, no. That was wrong. Damn it. Okay, good to uh, Bugger! Right, let's try that one again. So, boop, on top, and then spin it around, and boop! There we go. And we'll do the same with that side. There we go, and then it's a simple case of just finding that little engine, and there we go. Little engine, little engine, and we want a little fuel tank. There it is. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically a double barrel, so twin linked, two shots. So it'll fire two at the same time. Now the theory in, in behind the whole firing two at the same time is that if you have just one and you fire it anywhere in space, it will, if you've got a relatively small ship, actually catapult well it will start spinning your ship because every action has an opposite and equal reaction so before we can launch these we have one last thing to do mm, it's a bit high tell you what let's move oh oops uh, didn't mean to do that let's bring that back again <laughs> oh dear there we go, it just goes to show how much of a derp I am. We can throw that bit away and... Yep, we're still there. Okay, so it's a bit close to the ground there. Alright, so... Let's sign some crew. We've got a Jebediah Bill, our two test pilots. Test pilots wear our orange jumpsuits and certified flight pilots wear the grey. So, there we go, test pilots. The other main thing behind me working uh, me working uh, these weapons is action groups. This middle button here is one of the most important thing that you're going to find when making your weapons. And uh, how these action groups work is well, let's just say well, if we click action group number one, we're going to want that engine, toggle engine, and that engine, toggle engine. So it's got the two engines to start up when I press a number one. And when I press number two, I want that docking port to undock and that docking port to undock. And then we can do the same for the one underneath. We find the engine, toggle engine, engine, toggle engine. And then four is just simply undock node and undock node. So we've got 
one toggle engines to release. As simple as that really. And once you've got those particular action groups lined out, and you make sure you've got all the right ones, as highlights, so if you run that one, it should highlight it, and run that one, it highlights that on the other side. Um, we can do this as uh, this is a test bed. Test bed ship. There we go, and we can save that and go ahead to the launch pad. So, boop -a doop -a doop, and it loads. Come on, there we go. So, I'm going to wait for the physics to load. Now, if you notice, all of these are grouped here, but that's not a problem because you've got your action groups. So, if I pressed one, it would activate just the engines and this one and this one. So, that's what we're going to do. So, what we're going to do is throttle up. And we're going to see if this works. So we're going to press 1 to activate and then 2 to release. So let's see if it works. 1 to activate, 2 to release. 2 to release. 2 to release. Oh, you're not releasing. Uh. Well, in theory, it would work if I had set that up properly. Let's try 3 and 4, shall we? They're not working either. Okay, so let's go back to. So this is this is all very important part of um, ah, vehicle assembly. There we go. This is all an important part of basically your testing is getting the action groups right because sometimes it doesn't recognise. Alright, so what's wrong with number two? It's undock node, undock node. Let's try that one again, shall we? So click on the bottom one now. Let's try decouple node and uh, the bottom one decouple node. Yep, and then try four. Let's try that one. So we get rid of them, and it's decouple node and decouple node. I'll save and go back straight back to launch again just to see if it'll work. We will get this to work, ladies and gentlemen. All of my technology is based on this. So three, two, one, activate, launch. There we go. Off they go. And for special treat, oops, wrong one. There you go, come on, there you go. We're going to use one of these absolutely fantastic new command modules, which look oh so shiny. So, this is we're not playing exact 100% stock, but uh, what I am using is uh, there we go. So, it's not 100% stock, but I'm not using any mods at the moment like MechJab. Oh, upside down view. Okay, so activating engines and release. And they should There you go. Hello. There you go. Ta da Oh those beautiful things climbing into orbit. Now, that's the standard thing. Obviously in space, because they're not fighting at gravity, they do tend to go off a little bit quicker, but still I'm finding that against fairly well hard targets, boop, we're having a little bit of a problem like penetrating things like armor. Uh, obviously, in simulation. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to revert fly, virtual vehicle assembly, and add some oomph. And we're going to do this uh, by adding, if we go to propulsion, more power. So, uh, we need to find these little things, separatrons. Remarkably powerful and quite small. So what we want to do is you want to stick four. Come on, you know you want to. There you go. You stick four on there. Let's zoom in a bit. So these four will go here. Now they have to be symmetric, otherwise this thing's just going to go absolutely nuts. Uh, four on. No. Why are you not putting on four? That's a little bit annoying. Hello? Uh, put on four. Okay, fine. I'm going to put two on. Apparently, I'm only putting on two. Right, there you go. Uh, Kerbal Space Program, eh? Who play it? There we are. Let's put two on there as well. Let's get it lined up. There we go. So that's basically going to provide extra oomph. So I'm going to come over this side and pretty much copy that. 
Uh, let's see now. There we go. Uh, we do four this time. Will you? Yes, you will. Fantastic. There we go. Well done, Kerbal Space Program. You big Lubux, you. There you go. And let's bring that down a little bit. There we go. Because we don't want them to hold on to to grasp this particular thing here. And sometimes the hitbox that surrounds this actually descends down a little bit because they're docked and the hitbox comes down here and these things tend to grab through things and you get a whole thing where it basically ends up holding it together which is not particularly brilliant so once we've attached all of those rockets we're going to go to our action groups and we're going to go to the first one which is just the engines we don't need to do the second one because we've sorted that out we're going to go there I'm going to go activate engine and on this side we're going to go car and we're going to go activate engine there we go and they're all highlighting that, and we want to go to custom 3. I want you to do this one several times. Yes. Add to attention. Because we put this on in groups. Add to attention. But this one went on in 4. Let's do it like that. So that should be 1 launch, 1 launch. So, save, launch. So this is the more powerful Mark 2 variant of my small anti-ship weaponry. So, let's see if we can get this to work. So, again, we'll throttle up and then press 1 and we'll press 2 relatively quickly because these separatrons are actually quite powerful and have got the propensity, the potential, sorry, to damage the separatron that's directly below it and then explosions. So, woof! Whee! How's that? And, relatively straight, they do relatively stray, yeah, 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 going quite up, hold on. There we go, that's a lot quicker, and they'll burn out, but, oh, it's gone, <laughs> it's gone. Uh, they burn out, let's, let's see if I can see these go, there they are. So, they burn out, but the little engine in the middle does keep on going, so for particularly long distance ranging shots, they're not hugely accurate, and that's why I've put the extra power on, so I can get close and then just wallop it in their face. So, three, two, one. Wow! Oh, they hit each other! <laughs> yes, that does happen. So, as you see there, I don't. Oh, hello? Hello? No? Oh, okay. So, as you see, those are quite successful. They go up quite high in a relatively straight line. Then there is a, a deviation margin. They do tend to go a bit squiffy. Um, but if all the engines are right and they're all clipped and all pointing in the same direction, well, they should go relatively quick. So anyway, so we're going to go back to the drawing board, revert flight, revert to vehicle assembly. So, that is the small stuff. So now, that's test bed ship. What we're going to do is we're going to make some big weapons. So we're going to go, take that, and throw it away. And take that, no, no, didn't want to do that. <sighs> Tell you what, let's just add that one back in. Bip -bip -bip -bip. There we go. Let's just put that one back in just for there we go. Right, so the large and weaponry, uh you can do now let's do let's do the docking port idea again because it seems to work. And this time we're actually gonna use the not the junior, but we're going to use the normal standard size one so it's bigger. There we are. I are already looking a bit more beefy though, huh? Not on this, not this small stuff, we're going to go for proper size things. So these docking ports here, and what I tend to use is, again, docking port to docking port. There we go again, and then we're actually going to do something a bit different. We're not going to do the decouple docking port thing because it's a bit slow and for the for bigger engines for more powerful stuff that tends to destroy everything behind it uh, having something that lets go of it really quickly is is infinitely better so what we're going to use is a stack separator you can see where this is going yet guys no? so we've got a stack separator there now it's always useful when you do a stack separator is you're going to want to grab any kind of uh, connector, we'll just go for a heavy one there, and I want to put it on there, oh, no, does not want to work, hello, come on, oh it is working, oh there we go, 
and we want to connect it in as straight as line as possible straight in. Uh, that is, oh, let's turn that off, don't need that, we need to go on to the middle. That's basically going to stop any kind of wobble, especially on launch takeoff, because we're actually going to make a nice big stack. So that's the deployments. That fires and lets go of whatever's else up there. Uh, and what is going to be up there is going to be a solid fuel rocket booster. In fact, the RT-10 solid fuel booster. I find this one to be better than this one because this one, the uh, BACC, is quite long so it's got a very good chance of just doing flips all over the place whereas this one, it's shorter and fatter meaning it's not likely to do a lot of flips and then all we need to do is... Uh, structural... yeah it should be go to the structural list put another decoupler on, there we go so that that basically is a shot. So we're going to put in another one. So we're going to find there we are. And we're going to put in another shot. There we go. And then another decoupler because why not? Let's go for three shots here, shall we? Big explosions are always fun. So there we go. And proportion. Now these things. Way will weigh a lot more because it's basically an impact damage because we don't need to worry about explosives because well everything in Kerbal Space Program blows up when it hits something even if it's just a lump of solid metal so you know it doesn't really matter what it's made of it'll always explode so what the main contributing factor to a lot of these things is going to be basically weight which is its kinetic force so how heavy is it and how fast is it going and as a lot of my weaponry in this case is going to be delivered at short range uh, if you remember the little one we added lots of power so it's going to be going at quite a fast speed in a short space of time whereas this one it's not going to have a lot of speed well it's going to have a lot of speed comparatively but it's going to weigh a lot uh, you can put a nose cone on this but this is basically kind of a test bed but you know, cover this in plating, add a load of structural supports, and Bob's your uncle, you've got yourself a uh, some kind of battleship or cruiser of some kind. Okay, so we're going to go back into our action groups. I'm going to have custom one. Uh, now these are going to be a bit different. These are we, You're not going to get the chance to activate then decouple. It's going to happen at the same time. So that one, activate engine, and that one, activate engine and the decoupler and that decoupler is all one shot so number two will be that one that one that one and that one and last but not least is our third shot which is going to be down here so it's going to be that one that one that one and that one uh, yes. So, we've grouped these together because when these fire, we've got no able to control it. It just goes and goes and goes. It's a solid fuel booster after all. So we've got no way of throttling it down. And in the split second takes you to hit one then the other, it can destroy that, which could destroy that, which means the whole stack collapses. Now these are very, very powerful when they do fire. I'm just going to call this test bed ship 2. Uh, capital save. There we go. Save launch. Okay, so it should be one, two, and three. Now these things you stuck on the side are absolutely massive. Uh, with the small ones, sometimes, especially if you use just the single engine, you can get to both firing them one at a time. With this, not so much. You're gonna have to fire them double barrel. It doesn't matter if they completely surround the ship, would be which would be absolutely mad. Glorious, but mad. Uh, it doesn't matter if they surround the ship, you just have to fire them in pairs that are versus each other. You, so that the forces are balanced, and the worst that will happen is your ship will scoot backwards very slightly when you fire them, if it's fairly light. So let's give this a go. We don't need to throttle up, but it's always a good habit to throttle up. And then we're just going to press the number one button, and we should see some fireworks. So, three, two, one, boom!
Oh dear. Oh god. What? What happened? What happened? Oh. Oh dear. You guys all right in there? No. No. Yes. Okay. Hatch. Oh, it's still alive. We've got the unique view of the. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, revert flight, and let's go back to the vehicle assembly. So in theory, we know that works, but it kind of makes everything bounce. So we do need to reinforce the crap out of everything. I'm afraid. It's one thing I forgot to do. There's one thing that you will learn in Kerbal Space Program if you've been playing for a little while. You'll know that there's no such thing as too much reinforcement. Let's do. So there, uh, because those blast off, they're pretty damn powerful. So if I reinforce the absolute bejesus out of this thing, there we are. Uh, I'm using heavy strut connectors, so a bit of a cheat. So that they've got quite a high strength value. Okay, let's see if that helps. Maybe. Let's give it a go. What's the worst that can happen, eh? Right, oh. <laughs> oh well. There we go. And as soon as we're in. Oof. There we go. Oh, oh. Okay. Let's revert flight. Revert to vehicle assembly building. I think we need to put something a bit more. Structurally integral underneath this thing. Let's raise that a little bit. So, the reason why this is breaking is because this is flexing, causing this to drop. So, what we want to do. Oof, let's stick a big ass fuel tank underneath this thing and then use it for structural rigidity. So let's go structural, let's put another little one of those cross beam, that one. And then we can add uh, something relatively large, I think, like a big fuel tank. And then what we can do, so usually the structural rigidity of the ship, once you start to add the outer shell and reinforcing the crap out of that and the shell attaches to the inner thing, you don't really need to worry about doing all of this kind of like all of this type of reinforcing because once you put all the armor plates on, the shell itself it's uh, there we go there we go I think we can add let's go with just a couple of them just to hold that in place. Let's see if we can put four on. Can we put four on? We can put four on. There we go. Alright, that might be enough. Hmm. Let's save and give it a go. It's all all it is is the flex, is because the downward force of those things disappearing and the ship being unable to go backwards, I think, causing this problem. So three, two, one, go! You ready? Oh, what was that? What was that? I ah, uh, uh, why are you blowing up? I don't. Uh, I maybe it's the exhaust from that thing damaging it. Hmm. Okay, revert flight. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you can see, Kerbal Space Program is being wonderfully. Um, hmm glitchy. Not quite sure what's going on here. Are you too far away? Is that what it is? Do you need to go do you need to be further away or closer? Well, if we flip that around nope. And move it away. And then move that one away. Not sure I'm understanding why it's blowing up. Oh, hello. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Let's 
just leave that like that and try and get hold of that and put it down here. There you go. Ta da! Alright, let's. Oh, they've broken, have they? <sighs> alright, alright, alright. Well done, Kerbal Space Program. You appear to be winning today. Winning mostly against me. Not sure I like that. So let's just re reinforce this because stops the whole stack being too wobbly on launch. It's a good habit to reinforce your stack. I mean, even I've got it quite a long distance away from it, so let's go save, launch. Let's see if this will work. Now, this shouldn't have broken the uh, the program we have for this. It's just, this is looking a bit ridiculous now. Hmm. Oh, it works. There we go. There we go. Oh, <laughs> oh, the smoke in the world. Now, I'm not quite sure why this is detonating with these being close to it because a lot of my designs, which do work in this version, might I add, have these stacks very close very very close to this and then it's all surrounded in armor and it's all being structural rigidity so I'm not sure whether it's the the exhaust or that going pop causing this to detonate somehow or whether it's the flexing of this trying to push the whole lot down and this kind of breaking and detonating too. Either way we're going to so that's hmm a bit odd but never mind. So there we go we're going to do Two more test fires, so I'm gonna watch these go. So five, four, three, two, one, boom. Look at that. Woo! Okay. And again, lots of smoke, yay. And they're still relatively okay. And then let's do the last one in cockpit, because that's always fun. I do like these cockpit views, they are particularly pretty. And three Two, one, fire! Wow, look at that! Off they go. How many meters? 700, 800, 1000 meters, a kilometer. Keep going, constant, still relatively straight. There we go, and gone! So, in space, those go on for quite a speed, but they get up to his top speed very, very quickly. And they're particularly dense. And then, what you can do is, if you were floating in space, if you want to load a new one, is you literally just decouple, so this part here just floats off and you don't need it anymore, it's just rubbish. And then the next stack you bring up with a tugboat or something, you can just clip on. Um, those rockets work perfectly well with these, with one of these just stuck on top. It just gives the first shot a little bit of extra mass, therefore the propensity to do a little bit more damage. So, there we go, and let's revert flight, let's revert back to the vehicle assembly building. There we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have been 4040. This has been a little bit of a confusing but hopefully somewhat informative uh, uh, test bed tutorial, I guess, on how to uh, design and build uh, relatively close range but hard hitting small and large weapons. Um, obviously, you can add bigger thrusters, there's lots of different patches that we use. Uh, I believe the, uh, the two different patches that I'm uh, using are KD Rocketry and hold on, just looking at my notes because I'm forgetful. There we go. Uh, come on, load up. There we go. Uh, KD Rocketry and uh, B9 Aerospace. Um, I there is the B9 Aerospace pack, more specifically. Uh, which is all these nice new parts here, all these beautiful, beautiful things. Uh, new modules, new parts. Uh, you'll notice that I've got a lot of additional parts and big engines like this particular beautiful thing. Uh, this is from the KD Rocketry Pack. Um, they're pretty similar to the main ones, it's just some of them blown up or other ones are literally just texture changes. They look a lot nicer than just that big yellow kind of orangey giant, giant tank thing. So. There you go, and since control, yep, I have got Mac Jeb installed as well, although in this case it wasn't exactly necessary. So, 
there we go ladies and gentlemen that's a little bit of a quick interlude uh, basically a, another little preamble video explaining how my stuff's going to work and how if you want to to build it uh, and of course if you have any ideas or suggestions please leave them in the comments uh, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed and click the like button and that will give me encouragement to carry on with this uh, with the series the series will be uh, storyline driven but the storyline is going to be fairly flexible depending on what happens on the other person's turn and what I do to react to it so in the meantime I have been 4040 this has been Kerbal Space Program and thank you very much for watching